My name is Andrea LeBlanc. I live in New Hampshire and my husband um, was killed on Flight 175 on 9-11. He taught cultural geography at the University of New Hampshire for 35 years. When he was killed, our, to a person, our kids, our, his colleagues, his students, our friends all said, where's Bob now when we need him to help us understand what just happened? Because he would have had that perspective. He would have known what precipitated it. He would have been able to take the he would have been able to talk from the perceptions that none of us had. And, um, and it was very hard um, to not have that, to know there, was, um, there were explanations that weren't forthcoming uh, after 9-11. Bob was probably one of the happiest people I've ever known. And um, probably one of the more curious. And to him, the, the variations in, in cultures and in people were something to celebrate. Um, he was insatiably curious and um, thought everybody should travel the world. And that if, if we did, if Americans did, there would be far less chance that we would see people as the other, that, that our common humanity would be apparent. Um, and I think that's still true. I think that's still true. Um, my first real sadness immediately on 9-11 was knowing what was likely going to happen, what did happen. Um, that retaliation was the name of the game, and there was nothing I could do to stop it. It was um, a really dark, sad time. And when I found, heard about members of Peaceful Tomorrows, um, I was so grateful. I was so grateful that there were other people who, who understood what I understood to be true. And um, it was very, very important to me. It still is very important to me. Um, I think that somehow this culture, maybe all cultures, I don't know, this culture anyway, has somehow normalized revenge. And that if, if you suffer, if you are the victim, you not only deserve revenge, but you need revenge in order to heal. And I don't buy that. I just don't buy it. It's it's just not true. You know that um, there aren't many true things in this world, and one of them is that violence begets violence. And I think it's also true that nonviolence begets nonviolence. You know that was that was. But it's a very important thing for me. Very selfish thing for me that. Um, I need the good stories. I need evidence that there are people out there all around, all over the world, who actually choose, make the choice to not let the anger or the despair overwhelm them and control their lives. That they will... Um, I, don't, I don't know that you can, you can choose to be angry or not, or choose to be sad or not, but you can choose what you do with those emotions. And I would far rather know about all the stories of the people who have chosen to do something positive and for life, for peace, than all the stories we're deluged with. And it's important to me that these stories become as ubiquitous as all the stories of horror and war and revenge. And without that, I don't see how anybody, if, 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 if kids don't know that there's another choice, how can we expect them to even begin to think about that alternative? So it's important what Peaceful Tomorrows does and says.